As Stadium Championship Series East began its season, Tyler Menega continued his dominance, winning another championship trophy. Gets a sidewall save. But will he make it two in a row? The professor is riding high after a freestyle win, but can Tom continue his reign of maximum destruction in the Lone Star State? Or will Tristan England be the pride of Texas and lead JCB Digatron to the top of the podium? This is round five. This is Monster Jam. Oh, ho, ho! And here we go! Final quarter, England's got it! And he is your racing champion. Oh, can he get the save? And he's got it! Going up! Oh, yeah! He's going high! That is a Lagoon leap off the container! With the combination move! Oh my goodness! Huge hair! And he's gonna make the save! Welcome back to the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas for round five of the 2024 season. I'm Scott Jordan alongside the seven Deuce Deuce coming to you from the Monster Jam Studios. Last round was a wild ride with some trials and some tribulations. Triumphs in there as well. It's safe to say we're in for a fun road to world finals on this series. What were your biggest takeaways from round four? You know, Tyler Meninga just seemed unstoppable once again. He started right where he left off last year. Tristan England in that new Gigatron truck, though, that was very good getting second in that event championship. But I think my favorite thing, Tom Mintz getting the freestyle win. Let's talk about Tyler Menega. He won the event championship a year ago now, dominant the Superstar Challenge. Going to be tough to dethrone. He just doesn't make any mistakes. Do you see any weaknesses at all in his driving style? You know, his driving style, there's a reason he won that championship last year. But for Tyler, I think, you know, we saw it at the previous event. He had those mechanical issues. He had a transmission. He had something with his throttle stick going on. So that could definitely be a weakness in his armor. The problem is that he doesn't even have that big of a weakness because his crew chief is so good. It's going to be hard to beat Tyler this season. Yeah, when the truck is dialed in, he uh, he's almost unstoppable. And right now, let's bring the third member of our broadcast team into the fold as we go to Leslie Mears, who's standing by with our event champion, Tyler Menega. Yeah, guys, there was a lot of commotion surrounding the opening event of the season for this series. You know, new truck for Tristan England, Tom's farewell tour. Nobody's talking about your World Finals Championship or the fact that you, you know, swept your stadium championship series last year, Tyler. So do you feel like you kind of had to go out and prove something last night? No, not necessarily. Uh, I just, I was really calm, cool, and collected in the truck. And honestly, I, I feel like I use that to my advantage a lot. Uh, I don't know if maybe Tom and Tristan were a little nervous because it is, you know, Tom's farewell tour and Tristan being in that new truck. But I was cool as a cucumber all night. So I don't know if that helps or, I don't know, I feel like it helps. So I just keep doing that and it seems to keep working, so. We'll see if he lets it eat. Let's take a look tonight at uh, the driver lineup. Tristan England and Adam finished second in points last round, falling just short of freestyle. If he can settle into his new truck, could he unseat Tyler today as the event winner? <laughs> you know, Tristan England is definitely the guy that's going to compete with Tyler. But it was interesting to see Tyler say that Tom and Tristan were a little bit nervous in their truck, a little bit of beef going on there. I like it. Let's take a look at the season point standings after one round. Tyler, as we mentioned, won the event. He has 33 points. Tristan England right there, just three behind him. Bryce Kenny in third, Tom Mintz in fourth, and John Gordon in fifth with 24 points. Drivers going to compete tonight in three competitions. JCB Racing, the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and Freestyle points are awarded based on finish. 12 goes the winner, and the driver with the most points at the end of the event is crowned the overall event champion. Let's go to track talk. This track does not appear at the moment to have a dominant lane. So what should drivers be looking for, Adam, when it comes to lane choice? Well, if it's me and lane choice, I am definitely going to put somebody in the lane that they lost in last night. If I have lane choice, any kind of advantage is crucial right now. Tonight's track is not new. These drivers know where their mark's at, and it's going to be very crucial to be fast. This track's even going to be faster than it was last night because they know it. 
Let's see what happens here in racing. Let's take a look at the JCB Racing bracket in round one. Bad Company, Jester, Shaker versus Kraken, Lucas Stabilizer, El Toro Loco, Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior versus the Black Pearl. Round two buys going to JCB Digatron, Megalodon, Brave Digger, and Max D. Adam, what do you like about this bracket in San Antonio? I mean, I love Bryce Kenny and Cole Bernard. They had a huge rivalry last season in Championship Series Red, and I can't wait to see it continue. Let's go to the track at the Alamo Dome. The first race of the day is Matt Pagliarulo in Jester against John Gordon in Bad Company. Now, John did not win a racing round last time in San Antonio, but he was able to come back in the competition. We'll see if those two race passes pay off for him here as we start round one of racing. John Gordon off to a great start on that right side. Slowing down a little bit, getting through the berm. They got to go in one entire lap, and then they come out. When they come out, it is shifted into gear to go around fast. John makes a nice corner, gets a little sideways across the turn pod. Ooh, John grabs that turn pod. Jester's a little bit behind, but makes up a huge amount of time. It's coming to the last corner, Scott. Into the final corner we go. Bad Company gets there first across the race ramp. And John Gordon has his first racing round win of the year, 29.513. Next up is Ryan Disharoon and Shaker against Mike Pagliarulo in Kraken as these two drivers try to figure out the track. Let's go to Leslie. Guys, Ryan Disharoon feels confident about his racing game. And I said, hey man, how are you gonna elevate and make it to the next round? He said, today it's gonna be all about reading that track. He thinks it's gonna be better than it was for event one. It's not gonna be as slick. And by watching that first pair, he's definitely got a little bit of an advantage and a better read on it. Thank you, Leslie. He has an advantage so far. Shaker dominant in this race here as we go into another corner. Ryan Disharoon dialed in in round one. Both drivers pushing way wide, but it looks like it's gonna be Shaker. Shaker takes the win. Let's take a look at the original super glue glue to the action replay. You can see Shaker here pushing out wide. A little different than the previous round, but Shaker coming away with the win. Ryan Disharoon will advance to round two. Up next in round one, it's your race. Adam Bryce Kenny driving Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior against Cole Bernard with the Black Pearl. Both have won racing competitions here at the Alamo Dome. Cole back in 2022, Bryce in 2020. And here we go, Adam, Bryce, and Cole, two dominant racers here. Went at it, as you mentioned, all season long on Stadium Championship Series Red, trying to get the best of each other, and it is Cole Bernard out of the burn first. A great drift from Bryce Kenny, but as you've seen, he just pushed a little bit wide into that landing, and it slowed him up a bit. Halfway through, Black Pearl has the lead. Bryce Kenny trying to play catch up. Great corner there for Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, but it might not matter. Black Pearl absolute rails, but I think on that corner, Bryce Kenny pushed to the finish line. Let's take a look at the replay. Here he comes in at the finish. It looks like it's going to be Bryce Kenny with a 27.488. Great come from behind win there for Bryce. Our final round one race, Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco lining up against Lindsey Reed and Lucas Stabilizer. Lindsey has no rear steer here, Adam. She lost it in intros. Her team replaced the ball switches, but still having all kinds of issue. How could she hit this track with no rear steer? She's going to have to start her corners extra, extra early. That is for sure, but it's going to be difficult. Shows it right there. She goes late on the corner, trying to get around the berm. Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco already out and out to a big lead. She needs to use the throttle here to get that rear end to pitch around the corners. She is not driving that truck hard enough without rear steer. Little ginger around the track, comes off, clips the finish line on the race ramp. And Jamie Garner has a spot here. It looks like she's gonna impede El Toro Loco a little bit. He gets around 27.573. You can see right here, she just has no rear steer. She pushes a little wide, grabs the landing on that finish line jump. Gets a little tossed off to the right, but manages to get out of the way. Here is the bracket for round two. It's going to be JCB Digatron against Bad Company. Megalodon versus Shaker. Brave Digger up against El Toro Loco and Max D going head to head with Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior. Things are heating up at the Alamo Dome. Round two of JCB Racing is next. Monster Jam is brought to you by JCB, the official heavy equipment partner of Monster Jam. Welcome back to San Antonio for the second round of JCB Racing. And up first, out of Hiram, Georgia, John Gordon in bad company. He goes head-to-head -head with Tristan England and JCB Digatron. Last time on this track, Tristan made it all the way to the finals. So we'll see if he can continue that hot streak here. Bad company against JCB Digatron. And off the line, Digatron gets the jump. 
Right here, you're gonna wanna stay inside. Nice job by John Gordon, but he grabs the pot. It's gonna slow him way up, coming to the outside. And have those two jammers right smack in the middle of the track on the berm. Those are gonna be tough all season long. JCB Digatron, Tristan England out to a big lead over Bad Company. Good corner from Bad Company, but that big mistake in the beginning. Oh, and Bad Company grabs the pod. Easy win for Digatron. Tristan England will advance. Let's go to the original super glue, glue to the action replay. Bad Company right here. Look at that left front tire. Grab the pod, it gets up. It pushes him wide because that bounce and makes him have to slow down and then again grabbing the pod on the last turn. Next up, it is going to be Ryan Disharoon and Shaker against two-time World Finals champion Todd LaDuke and Megalodon. Let's go back to Leslie. Guys, after studying the track and watching some video last night, Todd told me the point that he's really concentrating on today is exiting the berm. He said it's very, very narrow when you exit. So you've really got to concentrate all your efforts on making sure you can really pivot and shoot out of the berm, and that's where you're going to gain an edge, in his opinion. And just as you said that, Leslie, thank you very much, but Todd goes up a little bit over to the pod and ends up going crossways on this track. So Todd Duke not using that exit strategy out of the berm, and Ryan Disharoon and Shaker will advance. You can see right here, he comes in, grabs a little bit on the inside, gets hiked up, does a bit of a bicycle, can't slow down, goes over the top of that berm, and there will be no recovery. Last round's racing winner, Tyler Menega in Grave Digger is on the track now. He goes up against Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco advancing from the first round. Tyler looking to stay undefeated, goes really Ooh. tight though. He gets up on the berm and that is a huge error for Tyler Menega. Uncharacteristic mistake for Tyler Menega. Let's see if Jamie Garner can capitalize. Jamie Garner throwing a great drift in that first turn and has the advantage. Can he get it done? Tyler Mega trying to catch up here. Maybe too little, too late. Across the finish line we go. That is oh, a photo oh, finish. Oh. I can't believe Tyler caught up. Take a look at the replay. Here they come to the finish line. It looks like. El is Toro it really? Loco. Yes, sir. Upset of the day so far. Jamie Garner moving on. Our final round two matchup, Tom Mentz and Max D. He's going to race against Bryce Kenny in Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior. Winner takes the final spot in the semis. And it is Bryce Kenny getting the whole shot off the line into that far side berm. He goes up a little tight. I don't know what's going on with Tom Mentz. He's going a little slower than usual at this pace. Bryce Kenny could make him pay. Bryce Kenny making a little bit of an interesting move off the start by going straight and going a little wide, but Tom Mentz comes up short on that finish line jump, and that's going to cost him. Bryce Kenny trying to go head to head here with one of the greatest of all time, and he gets it done. Bryce Kenny advancing. Here's a replay. It looks like Tom Mentz had it until this little mishap. He knew he was sliding up the face of that jump, had to back off, and when you have to back off, you come up short to try to keep that thing straight, and that's where it all went away. Semi-final round is set. It's gonna be Tristan England with the fastest time in round two. He gets lane choice against Ryan Disharoon, and Jamie Gardner will have lane choice against Bryce Kenny. That fast time, 26. Point three three zero. The final four take the track in the semifinals. We crown our JCB Racing winner next on Monster Jam. Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips, the official hair salon of Monster Jam. Download the Great Clips app and check in online today. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome for the semifinal round of JCB Racing. And up first, it's Ryan Disharoon and Shaker against Tristan England and JCB Digatron. What does Tristan have to do to maintain that lightning fast pace? He's got to be steady in these first two corners. He's got to stay tight, but do not grab those pods. Round and round we go, almost arena style racing here to get a start. Tristan so skilled at that uh -huh. on the arena series, and he is out front right now over Shaker. Oh yeah, that was perfect. The exit corner on the second berm for Tristan England was absolutely immaculate. Up on the sidewall, a bicycle for Tristan England. He had it and smoke coming out. A JCB Digatron, Tristan had the win and it all went south. What happened? He had it in the bag. It looks like he pushes out wide right here, grabs a little bit of that cushion that got built up, puts him on two wheels, has to let off the gas. And should we be worried about that little bit of smoke? Our final matchup has Bryce Kenny Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior against Jamie Gardner and El Toro Loco. Bryce has found a good rhythm. And for more on that, let's check in with Leslie. 
I think we'll see a Bryce Kenny move on in rounds here because he's so relaxed. He told me earlier that in round one of racing, it's all about trying to go as fast as you can to get the buy. The rest of the rounds, they're all about having fun. So he's a little bit more relaxed as he's moving through the upper rounds of the bracket, and I think that really gives him an edge. Thank you, Lizzie. He has the edge right now. Jamie Garner having all kinds of problems in that far lane. And Bryce Ketty just has to make one final corner across the finish line. And Greg Clips Mohawk Warrior moving on. Check out the original super glue glue to the action replay. Jamie Garner comes out of this corner. He set the drift a little too hard and he prayed, held the throttle on, but just grabbed that pod and that was the end of it. Final round is set. It will be Ryan Disharoon and Shaker against Bryce Ketty and Greg Clips Mohawk Warrior, two great racers trying to get the first 12 points of the day. And Bryce will get lane choice. He had the second fastest time of the competition in that last round. But we see Shaker right now with some issues. Cole Venard over there working on it. What is going on with Shaker? Yeah, it's got to be some kind of battery issue probably. They're trying to get that thing started. Oh, and he's on the track. It must have been that Black Pro Magic touch there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Going on. All hands on deck trying to help Ryan get on the track. All hands on deck. We'll see if that late jump affects Ryan on the track. And we got a green light. And here we go. Final round. It is Kenny versus Disharoon. A little wide for Disharoon on that first turn. Bryce Kenny is tuned in. Oh, I hate to say it, but this race might already be over. Shaker hits the pot again, going around the corner. Bryce has a great lane center of that race ramp, goes right across it, doesn't lose any momentum. Final turn, Bryce Kenny trying to be the racing winner in San Antonio, across the ramp he goes, and Bryce Kenny gets it done. Take a look at the replay. Too many mistakes for Ryan Disharoon, grabs that pot, went wide on the first two berms, gives away a win, but still second place in racing. Bryce gets his first win on the season, and now let's hear from our racing winner as we go back to Leslie Mears. You know, Bryce, it seemed like you were so relaxed out there, having so much fun going through round. How much your muscle memory came back after uh, having that event yesterday? I don't feel like any of my runs were consistent tonight, but it's, it's really, I don't think you're going to have, you know, these cookie cutter runs out here on this berm track. You just have to be the best out of whoever you're racing in each and every round. And so that 26.4 pass I got in the semis, I hope that got everybody's attention and reminded them that we're a dangerous truck for them to go up against. It just feels so good to get a, a W. I think Tyler Meninga, I think he forgot what it felt like to lose because he's just all about winning all the time. But you know what? Anytime you can take home a W against these guys and girls, man, that's a big, big day. So we're just happy. Bryce Kenny throwing down the trash talk early <laughs> I love in San it. Antonio. He sits on top of the BKT overall point standings. Ryan Disharoon in second, Tristan England third, Jamie Garner in fourth, and the aforementioned Tyler Menega currently in fifth. Next up, the Alamo Dome, it's the Great Clip Skills Challenge, where drivers had the option to attempt two maneuvers on two wheels, where they could do a donut. Each driver was judged by fans in attendance on creativity, skill, and execution. 12 points once again on the line. Let's take a look back at our top five. Coming in fifth, Lindsey Reed getting on the board, the reverse stoppy and pirouette. Oh, nice job, Lindsey Reed, getting that thing straight up and down. Tristan England taking the moonwalk Willie combo. Tristan doing the same thing he did on the previous round, but he's so good at it. Look at the way he walks that 12,000 pound truck out. Man, that JCB body looks good. Throws it into a wheelie after the nose wheelie moonwalk. Great combination on top of the pod for Tristan. England. He has mastered that, that teeter-totter seesaw move. Did it all season long last year. Todd LaDuke, big nose William Megalodon. Good to see Todd LaDuke doing good here in skills. Second place, Tom Mance with the maximum moonwalk, this time off the step up. Yeah, a little bit different there. I love the switch up from Tom Mance. But you can see, look at his arm out the window, waving to the crowd. Oh, there's a reason they call him the professor. So much skill. And you can see how he's moving the truck so slowly. That's just a perfect indication that he has great balance and just control over that truck. And Tyler Menega gets back in the win column with a trademark combo moving Gravedigger. Tyler just doing what he does best, and that's out here winning. He's on that nose wheelie, throws it into a moonwalk onto the pod gonna walk it up there. Look at how slow and just perfect he does that. He's gonna go into another nose wheelie right here, walk it out, down the pod. Perfect execution from Tyler. 
and then off this ramp right here into a bicycle, and then looks like he's gonna do a cyclone, but gets a sidewall save, throws it into a nose wheelie, and that'll end his run. Didn't stick his hand out the window, though. <laughs> Didn't get a wave, not impressed there. Let's take a no, look at our BKT overall point standings. Tyler climbs back to that first spot. Tristan England in second, Tom Mintz in third, Bryce Ketty in fourth, and J.B. Garter El Toro Loco currently in fifth. Right now, Leslie Mears is standing by with the 2023 World Finals Champion, Tyler Meniga. When it comes to combos, you really are the king, Tyler. I mean, we, we almost saw something crazy out there in these maneuvers. This has really become your bread and butter for points, though. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's hard to do those moves. And honestly, I was not satisfied as much today as I was yesterday with the skills competition. Both my tricks were kind of not where I wanted them to be. But you know what? It was enough of the win. I do got to get up to Tom Mintz and Tristan England, though. They laid down some awesome runs. Uh, who knows who should have won, you know. But uh, you know what? We walked away with the win. More momentum uh, towards that uh, overall uh, point standings. We are cooking at the Alamo Dome, but who will walk out of San Antonio as the champion? Find out when we come back with more Monster Jam. Everyone at Monster Jam is proud to be partners with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Become a partner at Hope and receive a custom St. Jude Monster Jam This Shirt Saves Lives t-shirt. Text Monster Jam to 785-833 or visit stjude.org forward slash Monster Jam to learn more. San Antonio, Texas is the home of round five with Stadium Championship Series East. We've seen some great action so far in round five. Bryce Kenny got into the win column in racing. A year ago, he won four racing competitions. And I felt like at the beginning of the season, when this was announced, he would be the best true threat to Tristan England and Tyler Meniga on the racetrack. What does Bryce need to do to continue this pace and really contend for that championship? You know, I think he just has to do what he did tonight, and that's bring his best. You know, he did that last year with Adam Anderson, but, you know, Tyler and Tristan are a little bit more of technical drivers, so it's going to take a different strategy. But as long as Bryce goes out there and does his absolute best, doesn't make any mistakes, he just showed he can get it done. And he definitely did the talk to back it up as yes. well. Uh, after <laughs> I love it. after I love early it. exit racing, Tyler Menega comes back in skills. He takes the lead. But we have a little more parity this round with five drivers within four points. Adam, do you feel like drivers are now figuring out this track after one round and are able to capitalize that when we get a freestyle? You know, the one thing about this series is there's so many great drivers out there. You could tell there was a little bit of nerves at the first round, and that's that's always something that happens with athletes. You know, you get a little nervous, there's a new track, you're working it out. But these drivers are very, very good, and they know how to get it done. They've seen the footage, they reviewed the footage, and now what you're seeing is these drivers being comfortable and being fast, and this is gonna be close. Before we get into freestyle, let's take a look at how things stand with the BKT overall point standings. Brave Digger at 20, JCB Digatron 19, Max D and Great Clips with Mohawk Warrior at 18, and El Toro Loco with 16. Here's the freestyle order for today's action with the win last round. Tom Mentz has elected to go in front of Tyler Menigan. Grave Digger, what are your thoughts on that position? You know, I absolutely love that move. Very strategic from Tom Mentz getting that freestyle win at the previous round. Grave Digger is going to be hard to beat, but getting that little bit of flash early is going to be good. It's always a push for that first backflip, and that's where the big scores come in. Tom Mintz has won a lot of freestyles in this building. Is it only backflip or bust here for him, or can he do something else to take the win? I mean, you can get some big air and get it done that way, but you have to have a backflip somewhere in that run if you want to get a win in Monster Jam. Well, let's head to the track of the Alamo Dome for freestyle. Out first from Fortville, Indiana, it's Jamie Garner and El Toro Loco. And with that first position, a lot of drivers indifferent about it. For more on Jamie's thoughts on kicking off the competition, let's rejoin our pit reporter, Leslie Mears. Jamie Garner told me he's in a unique position here, going out early in freestyle. He said there's a lot of pressure to it because you have to fill your time. He said after seeing the track just one day ago, he said he's had a great idea of how to finish on the track. He said the best part is that his crew chief is in a great spot to give him communication out here so he can hit all his marks. Thank you, Leslie. As we see Jamie slowing down, take a look at the freestyle competition criteria there. Being told up here that it is a gear selector box issue for Jamie. It, it's fallen down a little beneath his reach, Adam. So he's got to loosen his belt, shift gears, tighten back up, and keep driving. That's a lot to focus on for Jamie Garner. You know, as an athlete, 
you have to be 100% focused on what you're doing and the task at hand. And that's managing this 12,000 pound, 1500 horsepower truck in this freestyle. And then trying to link these jumps together and having to worry about maybe loosening your belt up a little bit to adjust the shifter and then you're tightening your belt back up. That is gonna be so difficult. The run he's putting on right now is unreal and it looks like he's slowing down. He might be adjusting it again. He's doing something down there on the right yeah, side. Yeah, he's adjusting gears right there, trying to loosen up, tighten back up. He missed freestyle last round here due to that broken left front locker. So uh, not the ideal conditions for him here in his first full freestyle run of the season. But he's uh, making something out of nothing, getting the smoke out, trying to get the fans on his side to get a good score. Donut for El Toro Loco. Yeah, I love a good donut. Look at that right there. You see that gray area? That is actually getting down to the concrete on this floor, and that's gonna be helping Jamie Garner get this donut, and it just keeps on going, I love it. Only four points off the lead. Is Jamie Garner still in the conversation? Right now, it's time for Lindsey Reed and Lucas Stabilizer, and for more on Lindsey, let's check in with Leslie. Guys, Lindsey Reed learned the hard way at event one that the center of that track is super aggressive when you're trying to hit that triple. She said today she's going to try to work outside, inside, and then go for the wow moment again. She's got to make the one minute mark, especially with the new penalties imposed this year. Thank you, Lizzie. We talked about that penalty before. You have to, not only do you have to get 30 seconds to get a score, but now you have to at least get a minute or you get a point taken off of your score. So Monster Jam now really trying to encourage these drivers to uh, strategize that. And it has to become a factor and it may cost somebody an event championship or even a series title. Yeah, it's definitely a whole new factor and something new that Monster Jam's brought along that's gonna make it even more difficult for these drivers. They're gonna be thinking about it. They're like, oh man, I gotta get 30 seconds. And now they're like, oh, I gotta get a minute. And that's gonna actually make drivers a little bit more calm, wanna fill that time and only have a little bit of time there at the end to go big. Right here, Lindsey Reed taking over for Cynthia Gauthier um this season and you can tell it's been a hard adjustment on this truck it's set up for cynthia and when cynthia drives she goes so big and you can tell how stiff this truck is and how bouncy it is it's been a difficult adjustment for her and lindsey reed going for a backflip here lucas stabilizer if she hits it she's going to take the lead and she ends up all the way on the back and rolls the truck we'll see the score but we'll take a look at the original super blue replay here she comes into that backflip ramp just hits the throttle way too hard, over rotates, lands on the bumper. Luckily, she didn't land too hard on that rear wheel and break a tie rod. Lindsey Reed back to her world championship form, but will it lead to a win? Find out when we come back. Monster Jam fans arrived early today to the Alamo Dome to take part in the pit party. They had an opportunity to meet the drivers and interact with the trucks. If you want to experience fun for the whole family, get your tickets at monsterjam.com for the pit party at your next Monster Jam event. During the break, freestyle continue with Mike Pagliarulo in Kraken still having EFI issues. Gets a powerful donut there, gets a score of 5.926. And then his dad, Matt, would give it a go in Chester. He gets some big air, would beat his son's score, but would end up on the hood. 6.208 for Chester. And right now, we get back to the action at the Alamo Dome for Covenart in the Black Pearl. Covenard a little underwhelming in the last round here in San Antonio. He would finish 10th in freestyle and 9th in the event. So a slow start is not something you can afford even in a long stadium championship series. Yeah, especially when you're going against a guy like Tyler Meninga. He's so good, so consistent. And you got Tristan England who's been consistent. Tom Mintz who's been unbelievable. Lights out at that first round. You know, for Cole Bernard, he needs to try to bounce back, get some points. I know he broke that tie rod in freestyle, and that was upsetting, but he needs to put it in the back of his mind, do what he can right now, and put up a big score. And he's have a bounce back here in freestyle. Had no freestyle wins at all a year ago. And he's a driver that literally can contend for an event championship on any given night. He's a two-time Arena Series champion. So Cole Bernard has been at the top of the bout. I would love to see him get back there with a win tonight. You know, Cole's one of those drivers, like you just said, he can do it on any given night, but we need to see the consistency. And right now is when it's gonna start. He's got a little sky wheelie going on right there. Little slow around this track though. I'd like to see a little bit more horsepower, a little more momentum. You're gonna see something right here with the backflip ramp up to the container goes the Black Pearl. And he is gonna land this one beautifully 
And he's got room for more. Cole Menard putting it in the downshift, right up over the pod, all the way across, clears it, and greases it up over the berm. Big bounce, but a nice save. Good throttle control there at the end for Cole. Here he comes into the backflip. You're gonna see those front tires hit. Gives it a little gas, slightly over rotates, but I think that's the best backflip we've seen. He takes the lead with that run. Next out from the metal shop, Del Mar, Delaware, Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. And for more on Shaker's run, let's rejoin Leslie Mears. Ryan told me that this track is very, very exciting, but it's also really busy. And what that means is that when you're up in the air, you're gonna really don't know where you're gonna land yet, especially since they haven't had a couple weeks to get their marks on the track. And so he said, one thing you really gotta be aware of is the direction that you're jumping, what's in front of you, and how you're going to land and where you're gonna go next since it is so busy. Thank you, Lizzie. Adam, let's talk about that as a driver. When you are hitting a ramp, a pod, anything that can get you in the air, where are you looking to land, or are you looking to land at all? How do you how do you get that strategy to take part in this run? You know, I think one of the most difficult parts about Monster Jam is it's not like a Supercross um, dirt bike at all. When I'm riding, I don't have a harness. I'm not strapped in. I don't have a seat belt. And I can look around with these drivers, they are stuck in with a neck brace, one of the tightest harnesses I've ever felt in my entire life. And they can't look left or right. All they're doing is using their peripherals. So right now, why they're having such a difficult time finding out where they're landing is they don't know where their mark's at. Sometimes they'll use edges of the stadium. Sometimes they'll use trucks on the opposite end of the floor to try to mark where they're going. But really, it's about throttle control and knowing exactly how far you're going to launch that truck. Trying to thread the needle there is Ryan Disharoon. He runs into a little problem. Now he's got Shaker right where he needs it to be. Time winding down here in the freestyle run. Comes up over the pod, goes off to the left, down into a nose wheelie save. We see some sparks coming out of the back, and he's going right for the backflip ramp. Shaker going to try to land this one, and another beautiful landing. It's the pogo bounce, and that is going to do it for Ryan Disharoon. Take a look at the super glue replay. A nice big air. Look at that brand new shaker body. Gets a good bounce. That truck is settling well. Hits the backflip right here. Over rotates just a little bit. Comes down pretty hard on that right rear. But great execution of a freestyle run. Halfway through it is Colvin Arbor with the Black Pearl on top. But will it be enough? Find out next. Monster Jam is brought to you by Spinmaster. Monster trucks, monster stunts, monster jam. We are back to Alamo Dome as we continue freestyle with Stadium Championship Series East and out next out of Hiram, Georgia. Here comes John Gordon in Bad Company. So here's an interesting story about Bad Company from the last round. So new EFI issues, the independent trucks, Adam, now outfitted with EFI. There was a lot of fuel sloshing around in the tank. So what did they do? They put wiffle balls in the tank to keep it from sloshing without losing pressure. How in the world are wiffle balls gonna keep a monster truck ready to run? They're doing it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And the funny thing is, is he actually went to lo the local sporting goods stores and couldn't find enough wiffle balls. That's pretty funny. But what they do is they put it in the gas tank and they're gonna try to fill that gas tank up as much as possible. And it's gonna fill up a certain amount of volume where it won't let that fuel go left to right and it'll give a consistent feed into that fuel line so that it can have a perfect feed into the engine for that fuel to be just right. Imagine John going to the local sports store and asking how many <laughs> wiffle balls they had. They probably ask him, are you in a wiffle ball league? No, it's for my monster truck. Yeah, that's true. And they're like, a monster truck? What are you talking about? John's best finish in San Antonio in freestyle was six. That was last round, so big air. Transfer jump right onto the pod, goes right up over the near side berm. 8.604 is the score to beat from Cole Bernard in Black Pearl. A little bit of a slow turn there for John. Could have hit that a little harder, but he was at a bad angle. Big oh. wheelie into a cartwheel, trying to save it. Oh, not going to get it. John Gordon with a great try and there for a save. Take a look at the replay. Here he comes. This is a nice air from John Gordon. Look at that holographic chrome body. I love that. And then right here, you see how he comes at a bad angle, a little bit to the right, and then he goes for the slap wheelie, gets that left rear tire on the pod, and it sends him over. So unfortunate for John Gordon. 
All eyes were on Tristan England as he debuted JCB Digatron here in San Antonio last round. And we wanted to give you an exclusive look at the creation of the newest truck in Monster Jam. In 2024, we're excited to be introducing JCB, a new partner that is as committed and dedicated to performance and innovation as we are. So the partnership between JCB and Monster Jam really started with the family. Alice's son, Otis, was a huge Monster Jam fan. And he started drawing these trucks. My father said, what are you doing, Otis? You're not designing JCBs, you're not designing diggers. He said, no, something much more fun. I'm designing monster trucks. And out of that, our collaboration between JCB and Monster Jam has been born. But what JCB is famous for is a backhoe. So we spent a lot of time really trying to explore how we expressed a backhoe as a monster truck. How do we make it fun? And then when we think we've got the right idea, then we start to develop it in 3D. With the 3D model complete, we know exactly what our expectations are for the build. That's when the real work starts. We start cutting fiberglass panels. Once that's achieved, then we're able to do the color, paint, graphics, accessories, everything that brings the build to life. Tristan England, as the driver of Degatron, really made sense. Uh, now cementing himself as a world champion, he's going to compete. He's going to go out there and try to win a championship for JCB. We have the best fans at Monster Jam, and we're always looking for ways to surprise them and to excite them. And so we're bringing them a design that they haven't seen before. Now we get to Tristan on the track. And for more on JCB Degatron, let's go to Leslie. Usually, it takes half the season to shake down a truck here and figure out where you want all your settings to go. But after just one event, Tristan England says that he has this truck figured out. He says the shocks are dialed in perfect, that Howie has it set up right. And we're going to see him at 100% tonight. Thank you, Leslie. The one thing, Adam, about having a shiny new toy to play with, you don't want to break it. So I want to see Tristan take the reins off. He had a great first round here in San Antonio, finished second to Tyler Menig. I know it's a long season. He trails Tyler by three in the series point standing. So you want to keep pressure oh, on that oh, oh. huge air. That's how you take the reins off. But you want to break that thing in, right? I mean, you break some parts of it. Let's see it in action. Not only do you want to break it in, but you want to break it apart. For these Monster Jam fans, that's what they came here to see. A huge air followed with a nice technical move. Tristan England showing off some style and JCB Digatron. Finished fifth at freestyle last round. It was only downfall, finished second, both other competitions. Trying to keep the pressure on here, trying to get a win in freestyle in JCB Digatron. Nice throttle rhythm that you could hear from Tristan England. He's definitely starting to feel it. You can tell he's going bigger at the beginning of this round already. This truck is feeling like home. He is only one point off the event lead. 20 to 19, Tyler Meniga has the advantage. Wheelie on the backside of that combo jump. And there is your score to beat. Still rocking with Colvin at 8.604. JCB Nigatron now lining up here for the container. Tristan England sends it up, and Tristan England takes it down. Oh, Beautiful oh. landing, light as a feather, stiff as a board, backs up the truck, and comes right back for more. A lot of time left on the clock for Tristan here. Man, you can tell when he lined up for that backflip, he didn't want to mess up that body because that thing was perfect. Coming a little bit short on the pod, does not matter. We're thrashing now, I love it. Bounces off the landing, now has to hit the brakes. And we'll see if that does it for Tristan England. That will do it. Take a look at the original Super Glue replay. Here he goes. He uses that pod to get those two rear wheels up, throw it into a nose wheelie. And then right here, look at the perfect execution. This is picturesque of how you do a backflip in a Monster Jam truck. Here's how we stand in freestyle so far with that run. Tristan England has now taken the lead. And that puts pressure on Tyler Menega, who is still yet to come, along with Megalodon Maxi and Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Who will walk out of the Alamo Dome of the event championship? Our winner is crowned when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to Monster Jam. We're down to the last few trucks here in San Antonio. During the break, it was Todd the Duke would come up a bit short. He would not qualify for a score. And Tom Mentz won't secure back-to-back -back freestyle wins. His score of 5.704 will put him down near the bottom. Well, the event championship is now down to three, and right now it's time for the current leader to try and ice it right here. It's Tyler Menega in Gravedigger.
you have the overall event lead, Adam, you have Tristan England trailing you by a point. Who has the freestyle leading for Tyler Meninga? What's your strategy here to try to win your second event championship? It's go all out right here and put JCB Digatron in its place, and that is number two. Tyler Meninga is no new guy to being on top, and you can see it right now. Look at the huge air, true Grave Digger style. Man, Tyler is just so good at driving a Monster Jam truck. Freestyle was the only competition he did not win last round. He finished in fourth, goes off to the left, lands it beautifully on the pod. His 11 freestyle wins in 2023 led the sport. He won freestyle at the Superstar Challenge against the best of the best. A freestyle win here gets him the event championship. End over end floater pops it right back up. Beautiful segue into that stoppy into the moonwalk. Oh my goodness, Tyler. So good at those technical moves. Thrown in reverse, doesn't care where he's at on the track. Caution to the wind, throws it back into first, second, onto the pod, jumps off the pod. This is a Grave Digger run. It's a great run, and Adam, if I say beautiful one more time, slap me right in the <laughs> shoulder here. I'm just saying, I'm excited, I'm a kid right oh! now. Huge hair! Right into the bounce, eases it up on all four BKT tires, continues the momentum, has to make a hard turn, comes right back the other way. And over and over the pod there onto the front wheels and off to the step up again. My goodness, floater jump for Tyler Menega. That was like a super cross rhythm section right here. Oh my goodness, into the backflip ramp. A combo for the ages if he lands this on one side off to another. And Tyler Menega continues the run. 9.292 is the score to be from Tristan England up on three wheels. Oh man, he's got that front left tire picked up around that corner. That means he is on the horsepower. Oh my gosh, this is what we love about Monster Jam. Tyler putting it on and gets a sidewall save. Can he do any more? He could have just ended it right there. <laughs> Sidewinder to finish it off here. <laughs> One of the one of the headlights is out. I'm, I'm just noticing that now. <laughs> oh, okay. You got to put something down on the truck. Okay, I got I, you. I can't say it's all great. Take a look at the replay. <laughs> Here he comes into the backflip, throws it into reverse instantly. Veteran move, getting out of there. Tyler, little sky wheelie action, throws a little brake check, makes sure he doesn't hit the wall, gets it on two. Such an experienced driver, so much skill, makes the save. Look at how he comes to a complete stop, turns out of it, the amount of talent this kid has is truly unbelievable. Most famous guy in Oskaloosa, Iowa, Tyler <laughs> Meninga. Stamp it. And Gravedigger, one for the ages as we await the score here for Tyler. 9.669, that is going to take the lead. And that should put the event championship in the hands of Gravedigger. Our final competitor out of Kernersville, North Carolina, is Bryce Kenny driving Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. He has a racing win already today. We love the book ended with a freestyle win, but Adam with the score Tyler got, that's no easy task. To wow these fans, he's gonna need something spectacular, but I will say this, the crowd is on their feet right now and they're very excited. So if they see something good, they are gonna put those votes in and he could get a high score. And Bryce knows it's his responsibility to send them home happy with a great freestyle run here. You see the front clip of Great Clips Mohawk Warrior is gone. That improves the vision for Bryce by, by leaps and bounds. Yes, it does. You, when that hood is gone, these drivers, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but they cannot look left and right. They're strapped in so tight. They have a neck brace where they can't see out of the left window or the right window. They can only look forward. But something else you can do is kind of look through the frame on the right and left. So he'll have a little bit of an advantage being able to look through the frame. Stop you up on the pod. Great catch there for Bryce Kenny. Just going to hold it steady. Now into a moonwalk or nose wheelie. Maybe a moonwalk combo there. Nope, just going to stick with the nose wheelie. Then up over the berm and across to this side of the track. Score to be 9.669. And Bryce Kenny comes to a stop, lining the truck up. There's a lot of room here on the momentum. Oh. Huge air for Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior into the berm. Right oh off into a pirouette. What a move Bryce that was. That, that could take the win right there. He is pumped. The crowd is pumped. Take a look at the replay. Okay, here he comes. He got the one-two shift on that. He is so high up in the sky. That is unbelievable what these Monster Jam trucks can do. And then he gets a bad bounce from that jammer, and it turns out just right with the pirouette. What a run.
If you take a look at our final top five in freestyle, Grave Digger's gonna get the win, JC Dicatron in second, and the Black Pearl in third. That leads us to our final BKT overall point standings of the event. And once again, Tyler Menega gets the win by two over Tristan England. Bryce Kenny finishes third, Jamie Gardner in fourth, and Ryan Disharoon rounds out the top five. So Tyler Menega makes it two for two in San Antonio. Let's hear from our event champion. What's the skills competition and the freestyle that does it for you to take another overall? You know, we saw you really put a multitude of things in your freestyle, and then the save at the end was just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I got to give all the glory to this guy right here. Without a 100% running truck, I couldn't go out there and drive. I drove that truck as hard as I could out there today. And you know what? I got to give credit to Ryan Anderson, too. Uh, I'm well conditioned. Even though he's on the other tour, competing with him for the last two years, uh, you know what? I feel like I could, I could be with anybody at this point. So uh, definitely uh, a lot of momentum going into Houston next weekend and can't wait to get there and put on a show for those fans as well. It's going to be tough to beat. We'll find out who steps up as we stick with this series. Next, we head to NRG Stadium in Houston for two rounds. We hope to see you there. For Adam Entignap and Leslie Mears, I'm Scott Jordan. Good night. We'll see you next time on Monster Jam.